I get mad about it the more I hear can, people consistently say, well, I don't trust the Bears regime and the development of whoever they take at quarterback, Caleb Williams. Number one, why not? Why not? We I, have, I can, we have, I can we tell have, you why not. I mean, why, I, if, no, if, but Grady, we I have no, 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 because we talk about this regime like yeah. they've been there from the, the inception of the Bears. No, that's not true. Here's the problem, and here's why this is what this is the point that RG3 was making, and it is a fair one that both Mitchell Trubisky and Justin Fields were drafted into situations where the head coach was, for lack of a better word, a lame duck. And that's exactly where the Bears are right now. If Matt Eberflus doesn't get some sort of contract extension, I think we all feel like his job is hanging by a thread, and there's no question it hampers the development of a young quarterback. If they get fired, the coaching staff gets fired no. after one year. I think that's a legitimate concern, Dan. Well, oh, Greeny, then I would tell you what happened with Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury. Because they went in together. What happened with Trevor Lawrence and um, uh, Urban well, he, Meyer? They went in together. Urban Meyer. No, 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 because I mean, not all situations work out perfectly, obviously. And not all but this situations is one where you walk fail. in behind the eight ball, potentially. That's the no. concern. It, no, it is a but, legitimate question, at least. It, that's fine, but it's not going to be like the, the reason why it doesn't work out. It's not going to be the reason why we can't sit here and trust the Bears and Ryan Poles. This is the best situation a number one quarterback drafted at will walk into in the history of the NFL. Ryan Poles and his staff has done that. It, it, it do, has nothing to do with what was happening before he got there. And, and everyone talks about, well, what's a young quarterback's best friend? This was a defense that was the number one defense in the NFL last year, the last half of the season, stats-wise. That's the number one thing for a rookie quarterback so he doesn't have to go feel like he has to go score 30 points a game. Mm -hmm. And that's why I get frustrated when people say, well, no, we can't trust him. Why? We have no evidence to sit here and say that we cannot believe they can develop a young quarterback. Well, uh, Kamer is think, skeptical, as am I. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think because Dan is talking about the defense. Okay, talk to me about the offense because Matt Eberflus, a guy that a lot of people thought should have been fired after last season, fired his entire offensive staff. So when, when, you, when you bring up the point of this regime hasn't been there long, yes, but you talk about ownership, you talk about patterns, you talk about a franchise that has not shown with, all the, with the quarterbacks they've gotten, top picks that they've used to either draft quarterbacks or not take a quarterback. The, Ryan Poles has every right to, to be offended by RG's comment. But RG3's comment is valid because you have there isn't evidence that they have been able to develop a quarterback. And you have a head coach who literally said the entire the entire offensive staff that our last quarterback was with wasn't good enough. So let me bring in new guys and let's hope that this situation is better for Caleb Williams or whoever else they draft. Yeah. Shane Waldron. Uh, there is hope there because Jared Goff and Geno Smith had excellent years under him. But, again, it's unproven. So, so I'm a little surprised that Dan is surprised that people well, are Both things can be right. Ryan Poles can have done an excellent job assembling talent around a number one pick. And the Bears didn't have the worst record in the NFL last right. season. So it can be a good situation to walk into. But when the coach is basically facing a win or you're fired situation, that puts a different level of expectation and pressure, I think, on a rookie quarterback when his first and responsibility should be learning how to play in the NFL. RC, get in here. Well, the other, the other big thing is, too, when you bring in a coach and he has a specialty, which Matt Eberflus's specialty is defense, you want to see the defense improve. And Dan mentioned the stats headed toward the back end of the season, especially after acquiring Montez Sweat. And what this defense was able to be, and now you add a guy like Kevin Byard to the back end, you're able to re-sign Jalen Johnson, who became a pro bowler at the cornerback position. Also, you have DJ Moore, who was the one receiver last year who could beat one-on-ones, who could get 50-50 balls, who could give you yards after the catch. And we watched Justin Fields play extremely well with him while also using the tight end Cole Komet. You add Keenan Allen to that, who is one of the more underrated players in the entire NFL. An absolute walking wide open pass because of the way he executes in his routes, in his stems, getting off the line of scrimmage, and you've now given him skilled players on the outside. I don't necessarily 
necessarily believe that Matt Eberflus is a lame duck coach. I, I believe agree. he earned an opportunity to work with Caleb Williams. He's earned an opportunity to have a rookie quarterback and develop him. And you also mentioned Shane Waldron. Shane Waldron, who understands how to get quarterbacks to play well. Now, let's talk about Caleb Williams if he is the number one overall pick. We understand that he's talented. Some of this is going to be on him as well. How does he ingratiate himself into the locker room? How does Caleb Williams learn to play on time in the way that Shane Waldron wants him to play? And right. then it's going to be all the things we love about dude. The way that he creates, the way that he makes second chance plays look like first chance plays. When he does that at the right time, that's where the magic happens. I believe this is a really good situation for a young quarterback and a situation that's going to have more leeway, I believe, than we're giving Matt Eberflus credit for earning down the stretch last season. Yeah. Dan, go and, and, quick. And, and here's a big difference in these situations that everyone continue to reference in relation to Justin Fields and Mitchell Trubisky. The Chicago Bears took assets to go move up in the draft and acquire those two players, which weakened their future. The Chicago Bears, because of their decision last year, have greater assets, and neither of those guys were the number one pick. So not yeah. only are they selecting the player that they truly want, they also have more ammunition to go continue to build their football team. Mm -hmm. I completely disagree with the theory that we can't trust this regime to develop a young quarterback. You got Dak Prescott in the last year of his contract. You got Mike McCarthy in the last year of his contract. We got the ultimate championship or bust on the most popular team in the NFL. How do you sum up the picture in Dallas Orlovsky right now? Yeah, unless the Cowboys get to the NFC Championship game and play well, this is the last year for Mike McCarthy in Dallas and certainly the last year for Dak Prescott as a Dallas Cowboy. I'll paint a very clear picture. Unless that happens, Greeny, because this is what the reality for the Cowboys is. Dak Prescott is going to play well again this season, okay? And what happens is when he plays well, one of two things. The Cowboys are either going to have to pay him $65-plus million a year and still not have a championship to show for it, or he walks and they get absolutely nothing for him. That's why the day after the season when they got waxed by Green Bay, I was like, I'd start all over again. Everyone was like, you're a hater, this and that. No, I'm not. This is just the reality of where the Cowboys are. And unless they go to the NFC title and play well, There'll be a new start in Dallas. How do you like it, RC? No, I think Dan is absolutely right. I never saw last tango in Paris. I don't know how old <laughs> you have to be to do that. But I did see Big Trouble in Little China. And I remember when the sensei or the master died, and then the one dude just blew himself up, and he was like, and eventually his head popped off. That's what's going to happen with Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy. Their heads are going to pop off at some point this season because when you go into a year with a lame duck quarterback and yeah. a lame duck head coach, that is the writing on the wall to say that they will not be returning unless they show us something that we haven't seen from them. And Dan has it exactly right. Short of an NFC championship, short of an opportunity to actually win the Super Bowl this year, I believe they start over. Let's think about this. What would be the conversation if we saw Josh Allen get to the last year of his contract, a Joe Burrow, a Patrick Mahomes? You know what the conversation would be? Absolutely nothing. Because you know why? They will never get there. Because right. those franchises are locked in with those humans because they believe in their ability to play the quarterback position at a championship level. We saw this with Dak when he was trying to renew the first time, and we're seeing it again. Yeah, exactly. And so rather than compare him to Josh Allen and right. Joe Burrow, you have another player that you're comparing him to right now. Oh, Kirko Chains. Listen, I, I think short of Dak winning a Super Bowl, I don't think NFC title, I don't think NFC championship is enough because Dan, the statement he made was if they don't have a championship to show for it, that's why I think it's Super Bowl or bust for Dak in Dallas. And short of that, I think he'd be better off going somewhere. I think he'd be better off having the Kirk Cousins experience because everybody says, oh, well, Dak hasn't won anything. Well, Kirk Cousins has won the lottery of life as far as, being, as, far as winning money sure. from teams, right? But when you talk about championships, Dak is coming off an MVP type of season. This is a guy that will play well. I agree with Dak. He, I, I, I agree with Dan. He will play well next year. And I think he needs to have that feeling of, hey, we want you. Kirk Cousins coming up as old, 
I don't want to say as old, but given his age, given the injury, Kirk Cousins was still the most sought after free agent yeah. of this offseason. Dak should, next year, let Dak have that chance. Dan. Yeah, the Cowboys are like Cody Rhodes. You know, Rus WrestleMania is coming up. My kids are in love with it. I am as well. This time, Cody Rhodes finishes the story. The Cowboys won't. When, when Jerry Jones says we're locked and loaded, no, you're not. You're locked. Yeah. You're certainly not loaded. I mean, your cap hit for quarterback <laughs> is $55 million, okay? $55 million cap hit for Dak Prescott this year. The, ca the Eagles, top four offensive players, cap hit, which Jalen Hurts, Lane Johnson, Jordan Mailata, and A.J. Brown, those four guys combined is $52 million. Mm. Dak's is That's 55 crazy. Yeah. So you're, you're locked to try to go get what you want. You certainly ain't loaded, Jerry Jones. The last, Gurney, the last, we, we, we've seen this when, you know, Dak's salary cap hit-wise is over 20% of the salary cap this year. The last five times we've watched that happen in the NFL, it was Russell's last season in Seattle. It was Ryan Tannehill's last two years in Tennessee. It was one of Jimmy Garoppolo's years. And then it was a Drew Brees' years. A Drew Brees' year. Th those teams... Five times, 31 and 52. That's now, their record. It's almost impossible to do. And so RC's point is right. And, and so where does it leave us? I mean, what, what have, have they been, they've been handcuffed in this offseason anyway, right, Ryan? I mean, it, it, it feels well, like they, they haven't, haven't been able to <laughs> they, do practically anything. Greedy, they've handcuffed themselves, though. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. They've handcuffed themselves with a lack of belief in their quarterback and with the lack of action and trying to figure out a way to mitigate what his contract will do to this team. And to me, I know no team goes into the season and accepts loss, but the Dallas Cowboys are accepting that they will not be competing for a championship. The Dallas Cowboys are accepting that they will be fielding a team that not only won't we, that we won't speak about with championship aspirations, that is going to be Hard to convince people within that building that they have championship uh, aspirations based on how they approach this offseason with their quarterback and team building around him.